Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Caleb. You follow me, Captain Caleb, or you follow me on social media at Captain Caleb. Uh, this is Prince. You can follow him at Lombosan on YouTube and at Instagram. And I wanted to welcome you guys to Dragon Coffee for today. Or not only on camera, three airport. Ends. Yep, three ends. <laughs> and we're here to do some more Dragon Coffee and go over the few classes that we have left in Dungeons and Dragons because I think we literally only have like three. I don't know. We'll find out, right? Um, we're doing three episodes today because we only recorded one the other day because Nimrod was here. Our friend, Justo. Yes. Good friend. Good friend. He was over. And we did the rogue class, so now that the rogue's over, we're going to go to the class of Monka today. Monka S. Monka S. And without further ado, we have our character rolled up on Tetra-Cube slash character generator for D&D. &D. And I'm going to pop over there. <laughs> Okay, um, we got a Luxodon male monk. Uh, background of the Haunted One. Which is always a very interesting one. It has probably the weirdest background you can probably ever get. Uh, I mean, it's not interesting, it's just weird. Definitely weird. Um, occupation, Hunter or Trapper. Uh, appearances have, they apparently have missing fingers as a monk. Okay. Yep. High charisma, low intelligence. <clears throat> okay, at least it's not for the same thing. Yep. Uh, talent drinks everyone under the table with his missing fingers. He can barely hold the fucking... I mean, he just snorts it. He just... Okay. <laughs> That's... Cool. I mean, that's one of the way I would see him doing it. Use flowery speech or long words with their, with their tongue. <laughs> yes. Interaction trait. Ponderous. Values redemption and is drawn to a special place. Forbidden love. Ooh, yes, the Luxodon of love. I'm probably not going to include that when I tell the background because... Like Sometimes it just makes it kind of oh, diverse. How about you do the susceptible to love? Because that's very useful. Yeah. Do that part instead. Yeah. Way of the Sun Soul. Personality. Your monastery was founded by gnomes mm -hmm. and is an underground labyrinth of tunnels and rooms. That's a lot. The icons are of a dragon. A dragon once layered. Within your monastery, what the fuck? Its an influence rem remains long after its departure. Your master was merciless and is pushing you to your limits. Never lost an eye during one especially brutal practice session. You became a monk because I was wild and undisciplined as a youngster. And when I realized the error of my ways, I applied to a monastery and became a monk as a way to live a life of discipline. Very great. It's one of those over all over the place ones. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the background of the hunted one. I put trust in divine beings. <laughs> the ideal is I have a dark calling that puts me above the law. <laughs> the bond is there's evil in me and I can feel it. It must be set free. Never. Flaw. I have an addiction. The I've event was addiction. you Born under a dark star, you can feel it watching you coldly and distantly. Sometimes it beckons you in a dead of night. That's really cool. That's creepy as fuck. That's I like really it. cool. I like it. Alignment. Uh, we're gonna say we're gonna skip the lawful part and put chaotic neutral. Yeah. Because yeah. given what was there, exactly. It's chaotic neutral. He probably turned lawful and neutral after a while. Mm -hmm. uh, they were <laughs> birthed in a cart, carriage, or a wagon. They have absent parents who were enslaved or taken away. Poachers. That's pretty, pretty dark. Yes. The family lifestyle, <laughs> modest. 
childhood home, small house. Childhood members, I had several friends, and my childhood was generally a happy one. You know what? Every one of them have that. Yep. Lots of things. You spent time working <laughs> in a job related to your background. And then you start the game ha with... Haunted one? <laughs> extra decent. <laughs> your crime. You did a crime. You, you were a burglar, and you were caught and convicted. You spent time in jail. Chained to an oil or performing a hard labor, you served the sentence of 1D for years. Years. <laughs> or succeeded in escaping after that much time. Oh my god, mm, nice. there's a lot you can do with that, actually. Yeah. Uh, you made another enemy. Fuck, there's an enemy thing. Mm -hmm. A war. You escaped a battle unscathed, though many of your friends were injured or lost. You know, that always happens, too. Yep, and then there's a you fell in love or got married to another Luxodon. And you have a trinket of a wooden box with a crematic bottom that holds a living worm with a head on. Oh my god, that's too much. I mean, you are a haunted one after all. The head on <clears throat> each of its bodies. Yeah. A worm with a head on each you of its bodies. You wouldn't even be able to tell. That's creepy. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Hear me out name? now. His name is... Golomov. Golomov. So. Okay. Um, let's see. Golomov. I can picture this guy very well because he's a Luxodon. He's not hard. He's literally not an hard. elephant man. Not hard. While I pull up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do my thing. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, friends, family, brethren, I've gathered you here to tell you, to tell you of my past, as today is my graduation ceremony. I will miss all of you, but of course, there are things about me that I have not revealed yet. Ooh, 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 ooh. On the day I was born, I was born underneath the red moon. They said it was an event that only happens every one millennium. It just so happens to be that. I was born upon that day. Probably many other children were too. But for those of us who were born that day, we bear a mark. A mark of a moon on our backs. One that we have to wear proudly. So, of course, upon being born on that glorious day, my mother knew something was going to happen. Something would go awry. Something would go amiss. Sadly enough, On my fabled 13th birthday, which is when all of us Luxon become adults, I was going through my righteous ceremony, my passage to adulthood. That's when it happened. <sighs> I heard a loud booming sound coming from the inside of the forest. <sighs> Another, we thought it was thunder, but no, there was not a cloud in sight. <sighs> then we saw pew, boom. The wood splintered against the trees. Fire rained from above. 
as arrows flew down from the sky. We didn't anticipate this would happen. Who could? Who would? I didn't. But my mother, she looked right at me and said, Son, you're a man now. You must go. Live your life. Be free. We'll protect you as long as we can. I wanted to stay to help out, of course, but I couldn't. I knew I couldn't. I knew I shouldn't. I stayed around watching. I tagged and bagged them. Chained their legs together so that they could not move properly. Severed their ears off. For what? Leather? Food? Rare items? Bullshit. They fled. Running in the opposite direction for as long as I could. I traveled the world. Searching for answers. The questions I had, never meeting my parents again. I was angry. That who wouldn't have been my straight of being. I came across many cities and towns. I started bar fights. Everywhere I went. Undefeated. But scarred, bruised, broken. I tried every opportunity I could to kill myself without taking my own life because I couldn't stand it. I clobbered everyone in sight that I saw. Dozens of times over. Beating their faces into a pulp until they were unrecognizable. I knew my strength. I knew it well. I know who I could take down and who I could not. I always went for the toughest person in the bar. Till I was run out of every city you can think of. Then I came across Waterdeep, where I heard they had the biggest heist in all of the land. The Dragon Heist, it was called. I gathered a group of small time crooks, and then bigger crooks. We worked together, devising a plan to steal what we didn't know. Some of them were Xanathar spies. Excellent. And of course, he wanted the heist all to himself. All of the money, all of the jewelry, all of the gold, all of the wealth. His! That one eyed, bug eyed bastard. Snitched. Could you believe it? A criminal as big as him. A pussy. But. Whatever. I can't do a thing about that now. My greed and arrogance. They got me hauled away for the long haul. Until, of course, I built what was an armor set that I can use to bash through the books that I have weakened over time. 
made my daring escape. But then got caught again because I'm a very large target. I didn't think that part through. Spent a little while longer than I wanted there to until I was released. I said fuck it to Waterdeep because of course I did a bad thing there. I fled, left, once again. Well, I came across the strangest fucking thing ever. A mine shaft filled with small creatures called gnomes. You... I can't... I can't believe when they knew such ways of taking down opponents with their small and feeble, I, I mean, hearty bodies. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Shut up. Too sentless. That was disrespectful. That's what I thought. The black belt. So we trained for years and years. I outlived many of my trainers. Until, of course, here, me, becoming the master of this dojo of rock. It has been many good years with you folks, but I, I must continue my journey elsewhere. God bless you. As will I. I shall leave you to your days. Goodbye. There we go. There's some time for the song, baby. I timed it. It's a very pretty song. Pretty I much. timed it, man. I knew it. I saw it from the corner. Of oh, that was eyebrows. really good. Yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah, it really is. It's a skill that I acquired. Well, there you go, guys. Once again, you didn't expect it to go that long, but really well done. You had a bit of like a goat voice, but I like it at times. No, it was because of his trunk. Because of his trunk. So oh, it, so he was just... It reverberates sometimes. Oh, is that how it is? Yes. I like, he's got sinus problems. I like it. <laughs> All right, so uh, what's his name again? Forget. Golom of the Golomov. <laughs> oh God, such a weird name. Golomov. Golomov. I went ahead and did his stats. Um, as a Luxodon, you get plus two to con, and I have plus one to wisdom. So nothing helpful at all. So I just put in just some random stats, and then put it. Well, wisdom is good because they yeah. they scale off of that. Mm -hmm. uh, sixteen in wisdom, sixteen in dex, sixteen in con, twelve in strength, an eight in intelligence, and a fifteen charisma. Because they were saying he was charismatic for some reason. It's because of his flowery speech that I was not able to. Apparently, you have uh, an advantage on sense of smell checks. I mean, it, you know what I'm saying. Either way, we're looking at monk. Monk ass. So what is the definition of a monk in general? Uh, monk is the class that goes around punching things. Punching, kicking, using martial arts instead of what everyone else is doing. One of the more unique classes in Dungeons and Dragons. 
because you're not doing what everyone else is doing, technically. They are very overlooked for their lack of damage early in the game, but once they hit, I would say at least like level 13, they become very... Stupid? Oh, yeah. They're very strong. Very strong. It just takes a while for them to actually be strong. They're, they're not terrible by any means. They're interesting classes. It's just not the... If, if you're looking for a class to be strong at the get-go, that's not your class. It's a scaly mm -hmm. class like Wizard and like... Uh, I can't even say Rogue because Rogue's strong all the time. Uh, yeah. A scaly class like Wizard. Uh, but they do get evasion, though, so I mean... There is that. <laughs> yeah, no, they have some really cool stuff, so... Without further ado, let's just go ahead and start looking into the things that make a monk a monk. Monk ass. They have an armored defense. Uh, yeah, you're in robes. You're not wearing armor. An armored defense is while you are wearing no armor and not wielding a shield, your AC is equal to 10 plus your dex and wisdom modifier. So, you just get an armor based off how fast you are. And I guess the wisdom's there just to help. Perception of how well you perceive someone's attack coming towards you. I would all. Yep, and that's pretty much... If you decide to put armor on as a monk, that's a, that's a unique option and mm -hmm. that's your choice. But typically the idea is that you're not going to be wearing armor because you scale off of your decks and shit. Uh, martial arts. Uh, that is what you do. As a monk. Yep. Instead of using strength, you can use dex, so you can be a dex -like monk, which is, I always found weird that they have strength and dex as their saving throws, but they encourage dumping strength, really. Yeah, that's the, that's the worst part. That's what I was looking <clears> at, too, because I was like, um, why isn't wisdom the saving throw if you have to put wisdom? Yeah. Wouldn't it be dex and wisdom? But I guess that's if you're going for a Kensai build. If you go for a Kensai build, technically you can wield martial weapons and such, and you can actually use actual weapons aside from just monk weapons. So if you're looking for a Kensai build, you're probably just looking to really be a ninja, if anything. Sure enough. Proof and not. Ninja, ninja, ninja. Ninja. And you could, um, instead of, uh, you know, just using one plus your strength as damage, you use a d4 and it scales as you level up in your class. So that's always good. I mean, come on. Come exactly. On. And that's pretty much what martial arts is. Yep. Martial arts, I mean, like, you can also wield finesse weapons and count that as well. Uh, but there's not many finesse weapons in Dungeons and Dragons. Finesse weapons are like quarterstaff, quarterstaff, quarterstaff. There's like one or two other finesse weapons. Uh, you can it. technically um, word as written. Uh, your practice of martial arts gives you mastery of the combat styles that you can use in unarmed strikes and monk weapons, which are classified as short swords and any simple weapon. So it can be a short sword. You technically... And that would count. Yes. So if, you, like I said, if you're going for a Kensai build, that would that's work. when probably you would end up... With a short sword. Sure. Yep. Okay. Easy enough. But thematically speaking, you're a monk and you're, you want to punch things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, at second level, we have key. Uh, don't forget, um, in general, you can strike you as an action and then bonus as an action as well. Is that what it was? Well, that's yes. I mean, the, but well, that's this just is, in general, right? Yeah, this is just for oh, this yeah, is for yeah, new yeah, people. Yeah. Say, you know. Well, yeah, I forgot all about that yeah. because there's like five different. I know, right? Here. Yeah. What he's saying is that just general combat, because you are using martial arts, you can strike and as a bonus action strike. Uh, when we get in the key, then we're talking about, like, a little bit more complicated. It's not that complicated, but once you understand it, it it's, it's like, it's, it's very easy to understand. Oh, yeah. Monk is one of the easier classes to understand, but it also, I believe, to be one of the most fun classes. Monk is. Second level, we're going to get into key. 
Now, Ki is basically mystic energy that's harnessed within your ability to meditate. And Just shit. think of Naruto and Chakra. That's the best way of going about it. Uh, if you're not used to Naruto, like me, just think of um, Avatar. Except you're not with, without the cool powers. Unless you are going a class that is specifically based off of Avatar. Yes, there is an Avatar class. Subclass. Subclass, pretty much. But we're, we're not going into that, but there is one. Um, you, sp you spend these points. Uh, uh, wait, your monk level determines the number of points you have as shown in the key point table so uh they will show a chart for you and you'll know how many key points you have before you start spending yep 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 and we'll first get into flurry of blows Flur flurry of blows there is, is low a blows sorry <laughs> that's what they call it yeah they do that's call what it they call it they call it fur flurry of bows flurry it's like a flurry cane oh i'm gonna flurry cane. flurry of blows is Let's say, bah, I attack, and then I use a key point, I can do another attack, and then since you have another bonus action to attack, you can do a third attack. So you're basically spinning a key point to do another hit. Yep, so you can do significantly high scaling damage. After a while, it scales fairly well, and you'll be hitting like a great sword, like a double great sword. Oh yeah, it would. it's going to hurt after a while if you're actually going to take the time to... Go into this class with a long hole. Patient defense. Patient defense. You get uh, you get a free dodge action. Well, not free. You spend your resources, which is your key points, yeah, to in dodge. order to take a dodge as a bonus action, and therefore you can still take a action, it's... which is great. You punch. You defend. You punch. You uh, what is it? What else is the other ones? Uh, no, it's Step of the Wind? Yeah. Well, Step of the Wind is you can spend one key point to take the disengage action as a bonus action on your turn. So instead of doing an extra punch as a bonus action, you punch, and then if you're afraid that you're going to get fucked up by this thing that you just punched, you Step of the Wind to get out of it. Yep. Disengage, or hey, you just punch someone, you dash to a someone else, punch them if you got an extra attack. True enough, and then... Depending on your class. It de depends Depending on your level. level. Yep. Um, at second level, you also, your speed increases by 10 feet. So, depending on the class or race you are, some races, like a tabaxi, have a 40 speed at get-go. You add 10 speed to that. As a class and as a character, you have 50 speed just for being you. While everyone else has 30. And gnomes have 20. Five. Five. They have 25? Yeah, 25. 25, um, Tabaxi's, still worse. Tabaxi's have 30. I mean, they can just double their speed. That's that's yeah. kind of what I meant. I completely forgot that yeah. you actually have to activate that shit. Yeah. Never mind. But that's just a concept. That's why a lot of people go Tabaxi monks. Tabaxi puncher. Because Tabaxi monks are actually really freaking good. Same thing with an Eric Croker monk. Uh, literally flying, and you have you have a flying speed, so yep. you just can add more speed movement to get closer and just attack from above. It's just a concept, but it's a broken concept, and it works. But we're playing a Luxazon today, so that's what you're playing. If yeah, you I'm sorry. Build, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just giving concepts out. You do what you want, and this class is this character is a Luxazon. Um, at third level, you get you start getting into your tradition, which is the way of the sun soul for us, which we will get into that after we're done describing the entire class of monk. Because you get something at every level. Exactly, and we will we're just looking to separate the subclass from the actual class. Uh, deflect missiles. Another pretty key thing for monk. Early on, because I feel that it doesn't really... scale. No, because afterwards your your DM is probably not going to throw arrows at you. They're going to probably throw fireballs. Yeah, it's mostly gonna be magic or fire, mostly dragon shit. Yep. Let's see you deflect that fire breath. 
Uh, starting at third level, you can use your reaction to deflect or catch the missile when you are hit by a ranged weapon attack. When you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10, plus your dexterity level and your monk level. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can catch the miss missile of Salt Maul enough and fling it back. Yep. That's ex that's that's what you do. The concept is... And basically boomeranging it back to Basically, it's uh, just based on momentum where they used to show, you know, the slow-mos where they catch it between their fingers, they turn around and... And it just glides like oh, that. Oh, he did a thing. That, that, sorry, that was a bit racist, but you get the point. <laughs> Apologies. A little bit too much. Yeah, there. We're going to get flamed now. Uh, yeah, we're going to get show flame. Yeah. At fourth level, you get slow fall, which is stupid, but I love it. Uh, you can use your reaction when you fall to reduce any fall damage you take by an amount equal to five times your monk level. Five Monk times S. at your level four at this point, so you can dumb down the damage. It's it's, it's five damage per ten feet falling, right? One d six. One d six per ten feet falling. Let's say that um, you drop like 30, 40 feet, and it racks up to like eighteen damage or something like that. You can if you just use your reaction and you're at level four. You don't take any damage. You literally don't take any damage because you you're allowed to reduce uh, literally twenty damage. Or hey, you know, when you uh, when you're level twenty, you just one hundred twenty damage gone. Yep, I feel like this is really stupid, and I love it because yeah. it's based off the concept that you're able to jump <laughs> and that you basically glide. It's it's very based on the old school. Uh, movies. Yes, the martial arts movies yes. where people were jumping on leaves. Pretty much. And just doing random shit. Yep. Flying through the air and punching each other. Just... <laughs> At fifth level, we you get one of the most cucking things to a DM. You get ask Matt Mercer himself, for he has complained on a numerous amount of times how much stunning strike has hurt him as a DM. Mm. Stunning Strike is something you get as a monk that can allows you to interfere with the flow of key in an opponent's body. When you hit another creature with a melee attack, you can spin that key point to attempt a Stunning Strike. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned. Now, you may think that this is not that big, listening to it but when you're a dm and this is happening to you over and over and over again from just just one punch from your pcs it's it's uh it can be a nightmare to deal with but we have to also take into account that uh monsters scale just as, as hard. hard as absolutely plus 13 con saves exactly it's 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 just like we're just talking about minor things here. We're not talking about, like, big monsters, because when you're a DM, you control so much shit, and you throw big stuff at it. Like, that's that's going to be... That's nothing. Some monsters have to react and just be like, oh, I legendary resist that. You can't do that to me. I, I, I'm, I'm immune to being stunned. There's a lot of monsters out there that can literally cut this. But... If you're not expecting it as a DM and you're just looking to build an encounter and every one of your uh, <laughs> enemies are getting stunned, it can turn out to be a cool imagery, but could cut your fun. Maybe. But that's DM. That's if you're, you're, you're a killer. You're a killjoy. I just usually have fun. We all do. Hell yeah. Exactly. And you get extra attack. So you get to attack twice. Exactly. As an attack action. So you take the attack action. You go, hey, I want to take the attack action. Boom, boom. And then, of course, you know, for your blows. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, Four Lord. attacks. The same. A lot more shit than I thought they did. Uh, key empowered strikes. Starting at sixth level, your unarmed strikes count as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance. You get magic fists. 
it, it just happens. But then again, you probably don't get anything magical before that because mm -hmm. you're a monk. Exactly. Monk S. Seventh level, you can use your action to end <clears throat> one effect of your uh, on yourself that is causing you to be charmed or frightened. So if you're charmed or frightened, you can just shrug it off by using stillness of mind. And you also get evasion because you're a monk. So you can potentially, when you make a dexterity saving throw, you always take half damage. Or if, no you, damage. Fit, if you pass it, <laughs> no, you take damage. no damage. Wow. I still, I still forget that shit with blood. Yes. It's okay. It's really hard. Because it's just an overloaded kit that you've given me. Yes, it is. A purity of body. <coughs> At 10th level, your mastery of the key flowing through you makes you immune to disease and poison. Yep. So, disease is not built-in game mechanics. Just FYI, disease is based on whatever the DM says. The DM can make any disease that they want to. Like the common cold. That's you. And now you have a negative one to your attacks. Look at that. Because of the common cold. Fine. But you can't get you can't get it though, because you're immune. At thirteenth level you get tongue of the sun and moon. No, 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 no. Starting at thirteenth level, you learn to touch the key of others' minds. So that you understand all spoken languages. Yes. Any creature that can understand a language can understand what you say. Yep. I just know how to talk to people now. Yes, you can literally talk to your your uh, your dead parents. I don't know. I don't know how to speak. Mock ass! Mock ass. You know I am one. Mock ass. So you become basically really good at your job. Level 14th, you get Diamond Soul. Beginning at 14th level, you master your mastery of key grants you proficiency in all saving throws. Yeah, why you say it like that, bro? Because it's stupid, and I love it. Additionally, when you make a saving throw and fail, you can spend one key point to re-roll it. Which is stupid, and I love it. It really makes, it adds some flavor to the monk class. And even though they actually have an overloaded kit, I didn't even know this. I didn't know that they actually had so many different things. No, oh, no, yeah. They literally get something at every single level. So this is just the meat of the class. This is what you get if you multi-class. In some, in some classes, they, you get shit. Exactly. Which is really interesting. Um, also, at 15th level... Your key sustains you so that you no, suffer no none of the frailty of old age. And you can't be aged magically. You can still die from old age. However, in addition, you no longer need food or water. You literally sustain yourself off of eating your own key for the rest of your life. Which is weird. Yep. Because it doesn't take a key point to do it. No, I'm just... I find this one to be a bit weird. It just seems like they added, they were just looking to add flavor to it for no reason. Um, well, they always go based off of those. You know, like, whenever you hear the stories of a monk that has been encased oh, in yeah, some for years. type of... Yeah. It, they've so been I think alive for years and they just meditated for a year without eating? Yeah, so I think that's mostly ba where the, it's based off of. Mm -hmm. That's probably what it is. I mean, we now, even to this day, we see... You know, cases of where a monk is still alive that has been doing this for who knows how long, but they are somehow dead and not dead at the same time. It's creepy. Yes. We don't understand it as normal people. At 18th level, you can use your action to spend four key points to become invisible for a minute. No concentration. During that time, you also have resistance to all damage... All damage. All, All damage. damage. But force damage. But what? Alright, I guess if you have a, a BBG that has magic missile, you're fucked! So you, me and Chris was talking about this. Uh, a monk rogue 
Two points in Rogue. Aye, Sneak aye, attack. Aye, 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 aye. Plus your, what, 70 10? Or was it 80 10? 80. That's broken. 1D, yeah, sorry, 1d10 damage. That's busted. So basically, you would do around, you know, 4d10 four, plus 2d6. Oh my god, I can't even think about that. That's so much damage. Plus fives on all of those, so it's a guaranteed, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Right there. That's ridiculous. That's too much. Mm -hmm. And then, also, you can spend eight key points to cast the Astral Projection spell without needing material components. Which, essentially speaking, Astral Projection is simply... That's more of a storyline tool. Uh, so you literally just come outside of your body and you actually project yourself. This is more, like I said, for storyline purposes. If someone has died in the party, say, for instance... Or there's someone in the astral realm that you have to speak to. Aside from that, there's really no point in casting this unless it's for storyline purposes. Because your body becomes inert and you can be susceptible to damage. And finally, your level 20 at the ability is when you roll for initiative and you have no key points remaining, you just get one. Hooray! But just being able to use only four key points in a battle that will probably take two hours or five hours. It's kind of eh. Yes. That's why I'm just like, eh. Isn't it eh? One. It's one of those, okay, so I have something to work with, but, not but really. I don't have anything really at the same time. Because if it's this, this last boss BBEG, having zero key points sucks. Ass. Yes. Either way. Exactly. Um, you should have prepared. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Maybe they maybe DM didn't give you enough time. Who knows? We're not you. We don't know what your situation is or why you have to use it. Yeah, what's your problem? Yeah, I don't know. It's not us. Yeah, what's your problem? Level 20 ability is still kind of eh. It's not the worst eh in the planet, though. No, it it, 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 that's why I say eh. It's not <laughs> blah or hooray. It's eh. I like that. I like the way you think about that. Like, the way you said those words. <laughs> so that's that. Do um, you have the thingy pulled up? Uh, sun song? Uh, it is. Alrighty. Trying to load the fuck up. Alright, so I'll be doing the same thing. You'll See probably get it faster. See time. who does it faster, because you know. Alright, Sun Soul. <laughs> uh, Radiant Sunbolt! Essentially speaking, you get a uh, Lux, not Lux a Dawn, but Lux from uh, League, of League, of, League of Lumbagos. Uh, you gain a new attack option that you can use the attack action. The special attack is a range uh, a special attack with a range of 30 feet. You are proficient with it, and you add your dexterity to the attack and damage rolls. It's damage is radiant so people who lived underground learned how to do harness the power of the sun i just want to point that out and it's damaged i don't you don't always have to follow that you can use whatever monk tradition you want whenever you're using this uh mm. the generator because please mm. please do so what the fuck? i completely noticed that at the beginning I, I and I was just like, huh, whatever, I'll go with it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, anyways, the die changes as you gain monk levels. So you can literally just become Lux. Not really. You can become Lux because you get a quarter staff, remember? She uses a quarter staff. That's fucking weird. Yes, it is. I don't even think they made this with the intention of being Lux. But you can basically I, be Lux. I see it as more like... Maybe we just see it differently. Uh, maybe. Like, I see Street Fighter and shit. Like, when they start... Throwing, like, when they start throwing just random... Random, random spells. Random like, random these spells. normal Street Fighters. That's what I'm looking oh at. Oh my god. I'm not gonna go into a Street Fighter rant because... Please, that we, is it'd be too much. Probably. Yeah. We may even do that someday because... 
Screw it. Maybe. Just because maybe. I love, I love Street Fighter 2. Anyways, so yeah. Down. Um, um, yeah. That's what I see. I just literally see this. You know, like, you know, like, Saggots? Or, like, I'm trying to... Yeah, he just... Things. He literally just yeah, throws it. That's yeah, what he, I'm saying. That's all he does. That's what I see. He throws the motion of the wind. Um, when you take the attack option on your turn and use this special attack as a part of it, you can spend a key point. So you can literally Kamehameha someone from one part of the area and then turn around and Kamehameha someone as a bonus action. You can do that special attack twice as a bonus action. Yes. So you get flurry of blows at 30 feet. Which is great. Yeah. Especially if you're uh, one of those monks that are just tired of going in for the moment and you're just like, I've been taking too much damage, I'm going to back up and you just... Or you just blows. like it. Because if some people Screw hate, it, right? you just like it. It's there. Exactly. Uh, at 11th level, you get Searing Sunburst. You gain the ability to create an orb of light that erupts into a devastating explosion. That's DBZ. Uh, Searing Arc Strike. What? Sixth level? Yeah. What? How did I have that pop up like that? My bad. Oh, okay. it's out of order? Yeah, I'm really? sorry. Well, no, it, it is what it is. It's, yeah. We'll get back to that. Sixth level, you get Searing Arc Strike. You gain the ability to channel into your key into Searing Waves of Energy. Once again, sagging. Immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend two key points to cast Burning Hands. Oh my god, that, like, literally, this subclass is dungeon, I mean, sorry, DBZ. It has done, uh, Dragon Ball written all over it. You punch and cast spells. Exactly. Just like, I'm literally, I'm literally seeing some, yeah, I'm literally seeing a, a Saiyan just walking in and just going, <laughs> And then just the cartoon. But yeah, Burning Hands is literally Burning Hands. Every time I look at this subclass, I literally think Dungeon... I mean, why do I always go to Dungeon? I don't know. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Oh no. And you can spend an additional key point to cast this at a higher level. If something is vulnerable to fire, and you're just... Breathing all over it. Hey, there you go. Third hand is already a pretty strong spell. Uh, second level is strong enough, you know. I see it like once again, like how you're talking about Street Fighter. I see it as that one guy who goes, "You go fire, you go flames," and that's all I remember about him. I don't remember his name. You mean the the one who would, who yeah. would just like teleport all around the place, and he he had the turban. Yeah, you're talking about the weird lanky guy. I don't yeah. remember his name. He had stretchy Dalsim. arms. Yeah, there Dalsim. you go. Yeah. I, 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 and I, I just I, see you go fire! You go flames. You go flames. But it's, it's Street Fighter and DBZ when I think about this shit. Uh, now we'll get to Searing Sunburst. Searing the Sunburst! And the ability to create an orb of light that erupts into a devastating explosion as an action, you create, you magically create this orb and hurl it at a point you choose within 150 feet <laughs> where it erupts into a sphere of radiant light for a brief but dead instant. Each creature in that 20 foot radius sphere must succeed on a constitution saving throw and take 2d6 radiant damage. So, uh, pretty much Piccolo's yep. thing that he did where he used to make the field of little bubble thingies and they would just... Where's that TN? I think that was TN. Might have been TN. I think that was TN. Because Piccolo only did like two moves. Right. Special Beam Cannon! Uh, uh, that's, all I, that's all he's known Not for. Special Beam Cannon! And yeah. stretchy arms. That's about it. It um, feels bad. I believe that was TN. I'm sure you'll correct us if we're of wrong. Of course. Oh, God. Just those subtitles. 17th level, Sun Shield. You become wreath. Wait, did I skip it? No, I didn't. Yeah, no, no. You're right. Wreath and luminous magical aura. You shed bright light in a 30-foot radius and dim light before an additional 30 feet. You can extinguish or restore a light as a bonus action. If a creature hits you with a melee attack while this light shines, you can use your reaction to deal radiant damage to the creature. The radiant damage equals 5, plus your wisdom modifier. 
At that point, your wisdom modifier is high. You're literally just like this weird glowing orb. I don't know what to think of this. It's it's not bad, obviously. But once again, unique, I can strive that with uh, Lux because she has the thing where she, when she throws her staff out and brings it back, she gets a little shield. Yeah, sort of. It's for me. That's like shield. Shield. That's a that's a good example. But I'm trying to think of. That's what I'm thinking of. Mm hmm. Super Sonic. Sorry. No goodness. Yellow Sonic. Yellow Sonic, indeed. Yeah. Ugh. Where I just go to Super Saiyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. His, that's just like a stupid yeah. Saiyan thing. But that's when I. That's when I see it. I'm like, they're growing a, a sunlight, but it's not like just a normal yellow light. Oh, I'm glowing yellow. It's bright as shit. It's mm -hmm. Bright as the sun. That's the concept. The f flap and jibber. Sorry, I think he's coming in tonight anyway, so I, th I think Jane called out. Oh. Regardless, we're talking about work things in the middle of the podcast. Sorry. What's wrong with us? We'll go ahead and start, we'll, we'll end this episode. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys for sticking out there with us. Uh, if you guys liked this, uh, go ahead and power up so that you can subscribe. And if you really want to harness all of the energy in the planet, go ahead and like. And then you can blast it out by hitting that toll of the bell to make sure that it continues to do harmful damage to you. Wait, no, that's probably that's probably not how I should have worded it. M maybe it it harness you harness the and I'm I'm sorry, I'm thinking about this way too much. You just it, have you have you smashed that like button? Have you subscribed to that channel? Okay, I'll give you a couple seconds. One second. Two seconds. Three. Whoa. You like that? Wow, I did not like that. <laughs> yeah. I really, I, mean did, I really didn't. All right, so go ahead and do that, please, while you while you are listening to this beautiful song, because I know you're willing, you're ready to hit that button. Thank you. Ow. Sorry, you hit the subscribe button too many times.